This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or simply making a donation. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Now then, uh, in the past few months, uh, so like just before and just after Christmas, I started doing a bunch of videos that were, you know, what's the best budget guitar in a bunch of different categories, you know, best kind of cheap Strat, best cheap Les Paul, that sort of thing. And um, it just seemed a logical thing to do today to look at it down the other end of the uh, telescope, shall we say. Let's imagine you've come into some money, you've had a bit of a windfall. Maybe your lottery numbers have come up. Maybe you've scooped the jackpot on the football pools, if that's still a thing, does anybody know? Uh, you know, kind of scanning your coop on every Saturday afternoon for eight score draws. Um, maybe, you know, you've just uh, had a bit of a win on the GGs. You know, some three-legged, wheezing, glue factory dodging, Draymond's naggers romped home at 200 to 1 at Kempton Park and enriched you to the tune of a big wheelbarrow full of £50 notes. Or maybe your name is Gary Lineker and, you know, everyone in the country who owns a television set has to pay a license fee so that you can get a lottery win sized salary once a year for talking about football once a week for half an hour. Hmm. Good job we're not bitter, isn't it? Anyway, let's imagine you've got this big pot of money and you're going to go guitar shopping. What would you buy? Well, here are my choices. A Strat type guitar. Right, so we're shopping for a bit of a posh high-end Strat. What's the first phrase that springs to mind? Fender Custom Shop. Now the thing is, I mean, yes, this one here, what have we got here? This is, uh, there it is, finished in pink paisley. Yeah, not really my cup of tea. I also don't like the 70s or the, the CBS era headstock. I know it came out in the 60s, but I tend to, in my mind, think of that as being strongly associated with the 70s strats. I prefer 22 frets. And if I'm spending four grand on a guitar, why would I want things that are kind of not really into like the finish and the the uh the 21 fret neck and the you know the the big ugly cbs headstock no we're not going to have a look at that one looking at some of the others though another word starts uh kind of rearing its um let's face it ugly head for you know quite a lot of them relic uh relic guitar relic guitar relic guitar relic guitar oh look at that one yes I mean, I get it. I get that some people like the idea of buying a brand new guitar that looks like a welder's bench that's been dug out of a peat bog after 50 years, but it's not my cup of tea. So, I'm not going with a Fender. I'm going to go with this here. Where are we? Yes, the, Fen the uh, Fender, the Ernie Ball Music Man uh, Steve Morse Y2D model, which is the sort of slimmed down version of the full on bewilderingly complex Steve Morse signature model. And just look at it uh, to me. I mean, I don't normally go in for something that looks that ostentatious, but, you know, if you got it, flaunt it. This is a lottery win guitar, don't forget. Uh, we have two, two humbuckers and a single coil. And what other switching options here? Well, you get the neck humbucker in series. You get the neck and bridge humbuckers in parallel, even though this wiring diagram here is actually series uh, wiring that's how um, that would look in a circuit diagram but you know if they're saying it's parallel which is basically the um, the way that you would normally have the neck and bridge pickups on together single coil on its own um, then single coil and uh, bridge humbucker in parallel hopefully that will uh, deliver some of the famous quacky position two strat sound that um, is one of the big selling points of a strat guitar and then bridge humbucker on its own so yeah and let's face it it's steve morse's guitar so you know if it's good enough for steve I think I'll manage to get by with one of those, don't you? Some kind of Telecaster. Now then, moving on to something a little bit more Telecaster-inspired. Uh, these are all Tom Anderson guitars. Guitars that, frankly, I've lusted after since I first saw a review of the uh, Grand Am Lamb 
uh, Tom Anderson model. I think that was in the 90s at some point. So let's have a look at the T Classic. What have we got here? Well, wait for it to load. Oh, dear me. That's pretty. Um, yes, uh, I'll have one of those, please. Um, let's have a look and see what options we've got on this, because this is very much the uh, shtick with Tom Anderson guitars. You can spec it up exactly as you want it. So, um, yeah, we'll go for the T family, T classic, body style. What's happening here? Um, yeah, let's go for solid with contours and scale length, traditional 25 and a half inch body wood uh let's have swamp ash shall we and uh finishing options um yeah let, let's go with satin finish it's there's something i quite like about the understatedness of a satin finish uh the actual color of the body uh what we got here uh uh yeah satin dark honey burst that's kind of my cup of tea really um uh, neck wood, maple, obviously. Uh, headstock finish, uh, yeah, let's have a matching headstock finish. Why not? Finish on the back of the neck, satin natural uh, neck shape. Um, yeah, happy medium. Um, can't go wrong with that, can you? Uh, nut width, uh, where are we? There we go. Let's go with uh, 1 and 11 sixteenths. Tuners, just regular split shaft tuners will do for me. I'm not really that bothered about locking tuners. Hardware colour, chrome. Uh, neck pickup. Now, what we're going to go for here is the TF1, which is uh, a noiseless single coil, with it, which gives a, a vintage style output for the neck pickup. Middle pickup, we're not having one of those. Bridge pickup. Um, what we got here, the TF2, I think it is. Let me just check the uh, the pickup specs. Uh, TF2, bridge position, vintage level. No, we, we want something a little bit hotter there. So we'll go for, I guess it's uh, the TF3, is it? Let's check the pickups. Yeah, TF3, most popular hum cancelling bridge option. Hotter, richer single coil tones, very sweet. So a nice beefy sounding telly single coil sounding pickup with no noise. And uh, then it's all about uh, the pickup rings and switch tip. Uh, let's go with uh, cream, I think, with a black tip. And then we might as well have a nice super deluxe hard case to go with it. Unfortunately, the picture doesn't update when you, um, you know, when you spec up all of those options. But as I said earlier, I'll just take one of those anyway. That that would be uh, that would be an ideal guitar for me in terms of telecasteriness um, and the fact that you can spec it up a little bit more to your own taste is just a bonus. But you know. It's a Tom Anderson guitar. It's going to be good, isn't it? Okay, let's move on and see what's next. A Les Paul of some description. Okay, now we're going to take a look for something a little bit Les Paul inspired. And uh, this is where we're going for this one. Gordon Smith guitars. As you are probably aware, I have a Gordon Smith GS 1.5, which is utterly fantastic. It's the best guitar I've ever owned bar none and i love it so it would be nice to see um what they can come up with for something a little bit more high end so let's see what stock guitars they've got in what's uh available right off the bat well not very much at the moment it seems uh so let's go and have a look at the custom built guitars um so this is where we're going to be going one of the graduate models which is as you can see um kind of a, a twin cutaway um carved top style guitar you can either get it with um a single cutaway or a double cutaway like this i would be inclined to go with double cutaway that way it makes it less of a just a, a les paul copy you know uh, so what we've got here we've got a standard or a slimline model so let's go with standard and uh, double cutaway right-handed 
Bodywood. Let's see. Well, it's it's got to be mahogany, hasn't it? I don't know why I'm even looking at that. Same with the neck. It needs to be um, mahogany neck. Now, neck profile. Normally, I would run a mile from from anything that says a thin neck profile, but my GS 1.5 is this neck profile, and it is as comfortable as an old pair of slippers. It's not thin in the sense of a an Ibanez wizard neck. It's more like an early 60s SG kind of neck. Uh, now, the next departure from the standard Les Paul script is we're not going to have a rosewood fretboard. We're going to have a flamed maple fretboard. And we're going to have... Um, what sort of uh, veneer shall we have on top? Because although these guitars are a carved top guitar, I think it's mahogany with a spruce carved top and then they stick a, a veneer on top of it, I believe. Um, I think that's the case. So we can have sycamore, pomelli, uh, rosewood, USA flame maple. Um, choices, choices. Sycamore, I think. Colour. What colour shall we have? Um, they do do a nice honey burst colour, uh, Gordon Smith. As you can see, much like the Tom Anderson uh, website, the uh, the picture doesn't update as you are specking up your options. But, you know, you can find examples of uh, all of these finishes and everything if you just do a simple Google image search. Burst uh, back and neck. No, no, thank you. Um, so... Yeah, finish, gloss front, yeah, it's uh, what what this means is basically you get a satin finish all over except from the, for the front, which is the uh, the face of the guitar. It's, uh, it's, it's nice and glossy and shiny, and it's got that sort of PRS dipped in glass look to it. But, you know, the bit that you're actually touching the neck and everything is uh, a nice satin finish, which I, I, on balance, I think I prefer. Uh, body binding. Well, you've got a scrape binding, which is like the PRS style binding. Cream, black, tort tortoiseshell. It has to be, doesn't it? Yes, I think. Um, yeah, I think we'll dispense with the uh, neck binding. Um, it's, yeah, it's not really um, a big deal for me. And um, yeah, I, I just, if I had to choose, I would say I prefer an unbound neck. So let's go with that. Uh, bridge. We've got uh, Tunematic, just a straight over wrap over bar type bridge, a lightning bridge, which is like the compensated wrap over bar bridge, much like the PRS wrap over bridge. Um, now, I think we'll go with uh, Tunematic. Um, pickups, uh, two Gordon Smith humbuckers, which you can switch into single coil mode. Uh, tuners, deluxe 18 to 1 ratio, although locking are available, but I'm not really that bothered about locking tuners, to be honest with you. Um, fret wire, well, yeah, has to be stainless steel, doesn't it? If this is, you know, the best of the best. Hardware colour, um, black, Cosmo black, which is like that smoky grey kind of colour. Gold, uh, vintage age, well, vintage aged nothing, thank you very much. Um, gold, yeah, why not? And pickup covers, black with colour matched coal pole pieces, yeah, I think that's what it has to be. And a Gordon Smith hard case, I don't want the 12 string version. Uh, standard strap buttons are fine, but I would like it set up with a set of 10s, thank you very much. So, all in all, let's kind of look at what we've got here. It's going to be a twin cutaway Les Paul style guitar uh, with gold hardware, flamed maple fretboard, um, a beautiful uh, sycamore top veneer on it, and um, yeah, it's basically going to be like the uh, like my Gordon Smith that's won the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> a lottery win guitar no doubt so that would be i think what i would go for in terms of like a something that's going to give me a bit of a les paul vibe let's see what's next shall we a thin line semi-solid of course no collection of classic guitar designs would be complete without a thin line semi and after much deliberation and cogitation and consideration this is what i think i would go for in nags guitars chainer model let's have a look at it there it is my dearie me isn't that pretty uh, it manages to look both 
traditional and old school and bang up to date at the same time. I think you've got a body shape which is somewhere between a Telecaster and a Les Paul. You've got um, straight string pull because of the six-a-side headstock, which looks kind of fenderish. although I would say it looks quite a lot like the uh, Paul Bigsby Mill Travis guitar headstock from the 40s. Um, a nice little nod to its heritage there. Uh, these guitars, in case you don't know, are made by Joe Nags, who used to be one of the um, bigwigs at PRS Guitars. Let's have a look at some of the models there. Yeah, yeah. I think, on balance, I think I would go with that one there. That's the uh, the prettiest looking thing on, on offer there. What do you get for this? Well, you get a 24 and a half inch, uh, 24 and three quarter inch uh, scale length, 22 frets, 12 inch uh, fretboard radius, uh, mahogany body, uh, top wood, maple or spruce, so you can specify your own preference there. M uh, mahogany neck, um, rosewood, uh, only in the USA, only USA models. I wonder if that's um, still the case after rosewood was taken off the CITES list. Uh, but, you know, Macassar ebony or ebony, headstock veneer, ebony or maple. I, I'd be inclined to go with maple there. Um, you know, then nickel hardware and, um, you know, electronics, two volume, one tone, three way toggle switch, everything that you would expect on, on this kind of uh, style of twin humbucker guitar. I just think it's, it's a refreshing change from yet another 335 um, or, you know, kind of that design of semi guitar. And I, I just think it looks absolutely gorgeously pretty and one of my students uh in one of my skype students in the states a guy called joe who's probably watching this right now hello joe how are you today uh he has a couple of nags guitars and he is absolutely over the moon with them and um so i'll uh, if it if it's not very good joe i'll blame you how about that but for the moment that would be my choice for a thin line semi let's move on and see what's next then the wildcard entry. And finally, we come to the wildcard entry. The, uh, the the guitar that doesn't really fit into any other category. Uh, this is a Crimson Custom Guitars Descendant 61 model. Um, so, if you don't know about Crimson Custom Guitars, they are a British guitar company who post regularly on YouTube. It's owned by uh, Master Luthier Ben Crow, who has the same haircut as me. <laughs> yes, you'll know who I mean if you, when you see him. Um, he makes beautiful guitars. He does... Uh, you know, kind of YouTube videos where you see him building a guitar from start to finish. And uh, this is apparently one of their best-selling models. And it's, yeah, as you can see, it's kind of vaguely Telecaster-shaped, but with a, with twin humbuckers. Um, and the great thing is it, that the company is called Crimson Custom Guitars, which means that, uh, you know, you can either buy an off-the-peg model like this, or you can, you know, kind of spec something up. And I think I would be inclined to go with this basic model and then spec it up, you know, with one or two uh, other options, which we'll talk about later. So there it is. What a beautiful looking thing it is, I think. Again, it does that thing where it's, it kind of looks modern and traditional at the same time. Um, one thing I love is these control plates here where they made you know just that the, the swooping curves and the uh, the way that they matched with the, the body wood of the top and look at the neck look at that flame maple on that neck isn't that utterly gorgeous um, so enough ogling at the uh, guitar pawn let's have a look at the specs let's scroll down um, yeah, how do I get? Oh, there we go. Yes, click out of the pictures. That would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Oh, look at that uh, neck there. Isn't that just gorgeous? So, uh, we get a 25 and a half inch scale length. 
uh, flamed maple one piece neck with an ebony fretboard 12 inch radius uh, 22 medium jumbo nickel silver frets okay so right there money no object we're getting rid of those and we're having stainless steel frets um, nut material uh, crimson developed excellus 43 mil millimeter nut. no idea what that is but i trust ben crow to choose a decent material for the uh, nut uh, what we got here six millimeter ebony inside stainless steel uh, inlays let's just have, take a quick look at those you can see there that you've got these um stainless steel inlays with um where, where have they gone uh, stainless steel circular inlays with an infill of ebony you know just understated but classy you know that's that's something that um i do like the idea of uh, open back tuners um no idea what the uh, ratio of those tuners is but i imagine that they are going to be um you know up to snuff uh what else we got uh chrome hardware chrome finished hardware well yeah let's upgrade that to to gold oh goto open back tuners um hardtail string through body yes that's very much my cup of tea uh crimson's own hand wound pickups um i'd be interested in hearing what they sound like in fact well i have heard what they sound like um on various youtube demos i think they would be probably my uh my choice but i'd be possibly maybe going for something uh, maybe like a seymour duncan alnico pro 2 which is a pickup that i do like the sound of um it's if you if you're familiar with um seymour duncan pickups or if you're not familiar with them then the alnico pro 2 is very much a a, a vintage classic sort of paf sort of sound um i think slash these days has his own uh signature seymour duncan pickups but for many years he used alnico pro 2s i believe and that's very much my kind of uh, classic rock warm ballsy old school paf humbucker type sound that i like so that would be the wild card entry in this um in this little lineup here a crimson uh custom guitars descendant 61 with a few tweaks uh to make it uniquely my choice of guitar so there you go that's the complete lineup so there you go that's what would be my choices but i suspect ask me again tomorrow and it might be different but today that's uh the collection of guitars that i would go for if i was suitably enriched let me know what you would buy so you're looking for something strat like something telecaster like something les paul like something uh some kind of semi uh thin line guitar and one wild card entry that doesn't fit into any of the above categories uh leave a comment down below telling me what you'd buy and more importantly why and don't worry about the money uh we're in that kind of territory where if you've got to ask the price you can't afford it but we can afford it because we've just won all that lovely money doing any of the things i mentioned earlier so let me know what you think and uh that's pretty much it for today folks thank you so much for watching thank you for your time if you enjoyed this little fantasy guitar shopping uh, escapade please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and give me a like while you're at it and i do look forward very much to seeing what you uh, come up with and seeing you all again next time around bye for now folks